This is our theme song. It's the greatest song ever written, written by Jay Sarge. We did the theme song for Tell Him Steve Day. In the year 1997, the future is in chaos and turmoil. Mankind is on the brink of extinction. Brave survivors band together and build a time displacement apparatus to receive a signal from a parallel future. This transmission is the Boondicott. The 200th episode, spectacular, for the third time ever, we return to the trials of trivia. We did it on our 63rd episode. We did it on our 100th episode. (laughs) And now, for 200, we're back. Maybe we'll be back for 263. Who the fuck knows? It's impossible to know. It's so random. But for 200... We're here. I am your host, Steven, and I have assembled the greatest co host in all of podcastdom. First off, representing for the trivia section of How I Met Your Mother, our former Trials of Trivia champion, our non binary champion of the world, the they of theys, D Rock. Oh my God, the they of theys. <laughs> that for fucking ever now that's amazing d-rock in the house and secondly the cohortress of my heart the chicken nugget of this podcast the most valuable member of the podcast because she is the only one of us who is a girl (laughs) Ah! amazing all right cool danielle hi yeah awesome she is representing She decided to change her colors just like Derek did from, uh, Derek went from Simpsons to How I Met Your Mother. She's changed her category from Buffy the Vampire Slayer to Friends so that she could challenge herself. It's not gonna work out. It's fine. (laughs) But I might surprise myself. And the first ever winner of Trials of Trivia The man who won episode number 63. The man who knows more about the DC universe than Zack Snyder, I'd say. (laughs) But not more than Steven. Mr. J. Hey, let's go. He is never giving up, and he will always represent for Rocky Trivia on the Trials of Trivia. That was amazing. Really? Do that again, George, with the shirt, because then like Look, it, it, it just... blends into the rock. Oh my gosh! And it becomes the shirt. It's, it's like you've made your own poster. How fancy! If that was the shirt. <laughs> and last but not least, his first time in a Trials of Trivia competition. Our self-proclaimed Marvel tard, horror director, <laughs> and looking like the Winter Soldier in a mask, we have. Andres Mesa in the house. What's up? What's up? SJWs Unite. He is representing for horror trivia today. And we have a show. So the show will comprise of five rounds. Can everyone see the screen? Oh my yes. goodness. Yes. We will have five okay. rounds. Uh, each of your trivia expertise will be one round of competition. There will be five questions per round for the first initial four rounds. Um, and the person whose trivia competition it is is uh, going to answer the first question. And then each of you will get a chance to, an- to, to try and answer 
one of the trivia questions per round. And then the last question of the round will be a toss up. So whoever raises their hand first on screen will get a chance to answer that question and vie for the points. Oh. You will be given points based on everything. Okay. <laughs> Oh Already, Lord. Andres and Danielle both got points for their unique background. Hey, wait, pause. FYI, uh, Mr. Trials of Trivia, you spell trivia. <laughs> <laughs> you Trima. get a point for that. <laughs> oh, first. Trima, the Trials of Trima. Another point for that. <laughs> so I awarded point. If you correct me, you're going to get a point. Way to go. Um, I put it out in chat first. I was the one. It was me. Did? Oh, oh. Oh. Triva, I'll give you a point for the chat as well. It's there. You can see it. It's documented. They <laughs> also got points for wearing a Rocky shirt and having the Rocky desktop background as well. So oh. everything is being accounted for. Everything, huh? I got a Juju Ito shirt. I'm wearing a Mario. So, where is my mouse? Where is my mouse? Okay, so the first round of competition will begin, and we are starting with our champions round, How I Met Your Mother round. I know nothing about this fucking show. Okay. D-Rock, you get the first question. This question is for you. Everyone, please. Wait, wait, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. It's because of the pandemic. But one more time. <laughs> He gets a chance to answer this first, and then if he can't answer it, we get to do this if we know it. Say. This? No. Say. He's gonna. He's gonna. He's gonna answer this question because he he knows everything about how I met your mother. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's the challenge. But, but just in case, if he doesn't get it, if one of you knows it, you can Say. raise your hand. Say sorry, Derek. Say. Right there. If if one of you knows it, you can raise your hand. Sorry. That's not what happened. Um, and try to get it. I'm sorry, guys. I tried. I tried to be diplomatic, and I failed. So the first question: Which star of Full House plays Ted in voiceover, narrating the show? A. Joey Gladstone. B. John Stamos. C. Dave Coulier. Or D. Bob Saget. D. Rock, your question. You don't have to raise your hand. Okay, Bob Saget. Correct. The correct answer is Bob Saget. Watch out. Okay. All right. Now, since it's Andres' first time at Trials of Trivia and he self-proclaimed says he knows nothing about this show, I'm going to give him the next question. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Not about this show, right? Oh, God. What yeah, number of the one. cast made forgetting Sarah Marshall? Oh, a, God, I don't know how to spell his name, though. Jason what the fuck? Siegel. That's fucked up. <laughs> B, Jason Siegel. Oh, come on. C, Josh Radnot. Or, I forgot to write D. <laughs> <laughs> Professional. Oh, man, how the fuck do you spell his name? <sighs> is, it, is it A? <laughs> is that your final answer? Fuck. Uh, Siegel. Yeah, Siegel. I, I will go with A. Final answer. The correct right. answer is A, Jason Siegel. Yeah. That's a good bet. Siegel sounds like a fake name. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> You're on to my ways. Oh, no. <laughs> that was expert in trivia. That the next question SJWs. will be directed at Mr. J. You're going to give me the hardest question. I know. I already know. I am I'm picking <laughs> totally randomly who goes next. What is the significance of the yellow umbrella? A, it is from Ted and Marshall's college days. B, it is an object originally owned by the mother, which Ted gets after she leaves it at a party. C, it is Barney's spy costume piece. D, it is the first thing bought upon moving to New York. Oh my gosh. Uh... I don't remember this really well, but I think it's B. Final answer. B, final answer. That is correct. Ooh, wow. He didn't. That's the whole worst season of Himian. B, 
be um, a winner, and yet he's a winner. You guys, you guys can't see this, but Lydia's biting her lip because she loves this show and she's known all the answers so far. Whoa. Oh no! <laughs> Next trials of trivia, we're gonna have to have Lydia. Yeah. Okay, and now this question is for Danielle. Which uh, character wrote the bro code? A. Ted Mosby. Okay. B. <laughs> She Barney Stinson, C. Marshall Erickson, or D. Ranjit? This feels like a trick question because I obviously want to say Barney because that's Neil Patrick Harris's character, right? Yeah, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's not. That's um, not but be. this feels like a trick question because it feels like he got it from someone else. I'm struggling. I, I'm just going to, I guess I'm going to pick B because I don't know. You're going to go B, Barney Stinson. Yeah. That is correct. It was written Yay! by Barney Stinson. And it's also a real book for sale as well. They they have Ew. monetized the real book. <laughs> Ew. I will, say, I will say, in the show, Barney never admits to writing the bro code. It's heavily implied. But according to him, this goes back to Brosis. Oh, oh and the oh. 10 bromandments <laughs> oh my god extra okay. points for Derek's extreme knowledge <laughs> all right now this last question is a toss-up so I'm gonna keep my eye on the cameras and whoever raises their hand first will get to answer which Buffy the Vampire Slayer actress stars in Him Yin? A, Sarah Michelle Gellar. I believe I saw D-Rock's hand up first. Allison Hannigan. C, are you sure it's not Christy Swanson? I am sure, yes. Wrong, it's But C. which Buffy the Vampire Slayer? Huh? Which Buffy the Vampire Slayer? Actress. Actress. Okay, but which? which, which one? There's a movie and a show. Yeah. From Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Wait, Derek got oh, points. <laughs> I'm giving Danielle a point for pointing out that there is a <laughs> We're abundant with trivia. That's re okay. Yes, the correct uh, answer is Allison Hannigan. Yay. I apologize, Derek. I was not trying to get a point. I was just. Oh, oh you did good. That's the game. <laughs> We're just going to be yelling out was... Derek to get extra points now. <laughs> it was very close between D Rock and Mr. J, though. Their hands both went up very fast, and then it was Danny. That was, that was very quick. I didn't even see Mr. J. Um, well, I have my screen laid out a specific way, so you you can you can mess with your screen layout if you want to. Oh, okay. Oh, because it's okay. I, I yeah, I have to scroll. There it is. Yeah. Okay. Next category. We are going into the friends round. It's Danielle's round. Woo! Friend zone. I get a single answer right. Okay. Danny. Wait, yes. Wait. I'm ready. Are you ready? Okay. I'm ready. The first question is for you. Before the MCU, what sitcom is the Friends universe connected to? A, <laughs> for the MCU. B, Mad About You, C, Frasier, or D, Family Matters? Uh, it's B, Mad About You. Is that your final answer? That is my final answer. Yes. That is correct. Suck it, Marvel. Marvel. Oh, come on. Man. This is, this, I'm going to just say we just watched the Friends reunion and we found this out that they based um, Phoebe's character on Lisa Kudrow's character from Matt. Like she played a waitress in Mad About You. I've known this for like, eons. This I haven't known out. that. I learned it on the Friends reunion. You need to study up on your sitcom TV universes. <laughs> many sitcom universes to explore. I don't know. I don't know anything, but I feel like the the Lisa Kudrow's character from Mad About You is actually more like Ursula. Yeah, no, they turned they turned her into Ursula, but they they cast Lisa because they liked her so much. And so Ursula plays the twin sister of Phoebe, right. thus connecting the two universes. Stop giving away trivia. I mean, you know, this is the question that we were on. <laughs> Okay, Ursula from Little Mermaid. I was like, "What?" Well done, Danielle. 
The next Friends trivia question will go to Mr. J. Oh, no. Mr. <laughs> J with the oh, no. Oh, no. Once again, I have no idea what question's next. Yikes. Yikes. After Friends ended, which character got their own spinoff sitcom? A, uh, Joey, B, Gunther, C, Ross, or D, Phoebe? I'm going to go Joey. <sighs> Is that your final answer? Yeah, final answer. A, Joey. Hey! That's nice. Let's go. Suck it, Gunther. <laughs> Suck it. <laughs> I love Gunther. There was a very <laughs> short-lived one season of Matt LeBlanc on the West Coast trying to be a lonely friend. Isn't it, like, widely known as one of the worst shows, like, of all time? <laughs> it wasn't, no. It wasn't that it was bad. It was just that it wasn't all the friends together, and the whole point was that it was an ensemble show, and nobody wanted to just watch one friend. Right. <laughs> like, it just didn't work. Next question is for d -Rock. Let's do this. What is the name of the coffee shop the friends frequent A oh, Rude Way, B Bean and Gone, C Central <laughs> Perk, D Starbucks. Better turn that all you go, you can hide it with your head. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Okay. <laughs> C Central Perk. Jeez. <laughs> I've seen the show. Not the answer being in the background. <laughs> You guys should applaud that I made up the word brood way. I thought brood way. <laughs> That's was, your word. Was a genius New York coffee shop name. <laughs> the correct answer is yes, Central Perk. It's the most right. set thing I've ever seen. Award points. Next question will go to Andres. You haven't done a friend's question yet, correct? Never have, never will. All right, go. <laughs> Which Friends cast member, cast member starred in the whole nine yards with Bruce Willis? I actually know this one. A, David Schwimmer. B, Courtney Cox. C, Jennifer Aniston. Or D, Matthew Perry. D, Matthew Perry, because that's the only name I don't recognize from that list. That is correct, Matthew oh. Perry. This caused Bruce Willis to end up appearing on Friends. Oh. Watch out, your minds are blown. I did not know that. <laughs> Bruce Willis was on Friends and tried to bang Rachel. Yeah, he played like a, a medical patient, right? No, he played like Rachel's um, boyfriend, older boyfriend, who ended up, never mind. I don't want to say because I'm going to give away trivia. So Yeah, I was trying to earn an extra point there. <laughs> He's scared of giving away trivia. Give I could, what if I give it away? Will I give it away? I mean, it doesn't matter. What makes Do you think that you could even touch me? In my trivia questioning. Okay. Do I get an extra point if I explain the whole thing? Yes. Okay, fine. He is the father of Ross's college girlfriend. Ross started dating one of his students as a prof he was a professor. He started dating one of his students, and then her father ended up being Bruce Willis. And then Rachel decided to start dating him. There you go. Very impressive. Very, you have been awarded points for that. <laughs> Bruce, Bruce Willis was also in Die Hard. Give me point. Oh, <laughs> he was in Die Hard. That is correct. <laughs> Half a point. No, um, no, no points. No point for that. I'm just joking. Quarter, right. quarter point. I'm idea. keeping an eye out on whose hand is raised first for the next question. Here it comes. Friends has a unique naming convention. Among sitcoms, what is it? Danny, I believe, had her hand first. You're a fast reader. Was it me or was it Dira? I was believe it? it was Danny. Okay, it is A, the one. A, the one. That is correct. Every I'm Jet Li. Starts with the one where or the one after <laughs> or the one with. The correct answer is the one. Another point for Danielle. And now we are entering the horror trivia round. Whoa. Can Yo. we get an update where we are on points? <laughs> I have no idea what's going on. He wants a point <laughs> update. Okay, let me do a point calibration here halfway through the battle. You haven't done been doing point <laughs> calibration? I've been doing points, but I haven't I haven't counted them. Okay. <laughs> You should have like an Excel sheet or something. Oh, but you have one computer. Never mind. Mm. <laughs> I 
you know, you worked in the corporate world when you're like, you should make an Excel spreadsheet. Oh, God. The points are as follow. Andres has five points and is in last place at the yeah. moment. <laughs> <laughs> and next in positioning is Mr. J with six points. D-Rock has seven points and Danny has eight points. Whoa, I'm winning right now. That's You're in cool. the lead at the moment. But it is on dresses round now. And if you guys have noticed, nobody has gotten any questions wrong yet. Uh-oh. You guys have have <laughs> why do you say that for my round? round? God damn it. <laughs> set, that's my knowledge setup. standards. That's such a setup. All right, let's go. Scared. Let's the first question out. for Andres. Who is the writer, director, star of the 1995 horror film Habit? A, Clint Howard, B, Bruce Campbell, C, Larry Fassenden, or D, oh. John Carpenter? Uh, it is C, Larry Fassenden. Give me an extra point because that movie was also 1997. Boom! Get the fuck oh, out of here. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back. Oh, shit. I'm, I'm making I should have said Clint Howard for the memes, though. Fuck. Super note of this. The correct answer is A is C, Larry Fazenden. Correct. Uh, next was it 97? Up, let's go. Is it, is it 97? Was he right? I'm assuming he's right. He's my trivia expert. Let me let me look it up. Let me look it up. I could be well, wrong. You want me to verify my trivia experts' questions and answers? That's crazy. No, because if I'm wrong, I don't want that extra point. Yes. I was gonna say 96 just to fuck with me. No, you're right. Oh no, there's two. There's a 95 and a 97. He must have like made a short film or something. No, don't take away my point. You're right, 95. In Wikipedia it says 97 though. Yeah, I have conflicting answers here on the internet. Yeah. He put because I know he did a short film, and I think I think uh I think it was that's the ninety five one, and then the or he made it in ninety five, and it wasn't released till ninety seven because he takes his time with his movie. Yeah, I'm correct. In ninety five, it was a short film, and so I guess oh, we're both this correct. Extremely archaic and convoluted history. Only you could wow. know, and that's why you're up to nine points right now. Way to go! <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice. <laughs> Not the from last question, question. I will direct at Danny. Okay. Danny, who are the killers in the Friday the 13th franchise? A, Pamela Sue Voorhees, Jason Voorhees, and Roy Burns. B, Pamela Ann Voorhees and Jason Voorhees. C, Jason Voorhees and Anna Voorhees. D, Tina Shepard and Jason Voorhees. Uh... This, I'll say, is, is one of the more difficult questions. I don't remember the name of his mom. That's what some people say, but some people remember the name of his mom. Um, Which configuration? You have multiple choices. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I, I understand <laughs> the multiple choice question. I'm eliminating. One of these is going to trip me up. I know it's going to happen. One of these is going to trip me up, but I'm going to say... Is it A? I feel like it's A. I'm probably wrong. The force is strong with you. It is A. Because ah, I remember, didn't we watch one of these movies where it was like, I thought it was Jason, but it wasn't Jason, and it was like someone else, and then... In Friday the 13th, part five, a new beginning. Spoilers, um, I haven't Roy. seen that one. Roy! <laughs> the killer Roy. is Roy Burns. Cyberpunk on Ultra. The paramedic, and uh, and and so any question that any answer doesn't have Roy Burns in it is automatically incorrect on your Jason Killer list. And yes, Pamela was the first killer, and then every other movie other than one and five has been Jason Voorhees as the killer. <laughs> Points for that stunning turn of events. I didn't think you were gonna get that. I thought you were gonna get tripped up. You could have really fucked us up if you included the TV show that had nothing to do with Jason. <laughs> <laughs> I unfortunately did not go that deep. I did not go yeah. that deep. 
I'm shocked I got that. I was like, no, I know. I think there's a third one. And I no, was like, I think the fact that the one Friday the 13th movie you saw was five is, is yeah. from what I'm understanding. <laughs> really, like, I no, got I like, right, no, I've so seen more than one Friday the 13th movie. I saw yeah, the yeah. one where he went to space. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's, that's the best one. <laughs> I've seen the first one. I yeah. saw the, whatever. I've seen some of them. The we next- saw the one. No, we saw the one with. Part seven, the new There blood. we go. The one I liked, right? Oh, the one versus Jason. Carrie, right? That was awesome. Yes, yeah. That's the best one. I All shipped right. the two of them together. The next question will go to Mr. J, who has not had a horror question yet. Yikes. <clears throat> With what 1982 Kurt Russell film features the special effects of Rob Bottin? A, Big Trouble in Little China. B, The Howling. C, The Witches of Eastwick. D, The Thing. <laughs> Oh God, um, there's only one Kurt Russell movie I've seen on this list. Uh, yikes. Um, I'll, I'll say D, The Thing, because I, I, I feel like Big Trouble in Little China is 85. So it's gotta be The Thing. Whoa, you're showing off, showing off your knowledge that Big Trouble in Little China is 85. But is well, that I don't a, know. I think it's 85. I think it's mid-80s. It so is it's be the, be thing. the thing. Let's go. Kurt Russell. <laughs> Watch out. Steven, you also wasted your Big Trouble Little China question, so I better not see another one in there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, D-Rock, you still have to go, right? Yeah. Okay. This next question is directed at you. Okay. Who originated the role of Leprechaun as a horror icon? A, Lyndon Porco, B, Warwick <laughs> Davis, C, Bill Impostel, or D, Billy Bob Thornton? I wish it was one of them. Uh, I'm gonna go with B, Warwick Davis. Final answer. B. Warwick Davis is correct. Even did you make up Lyndon Porco? Is that a fake name? <laughs> no, Lyndon Porco played <laughs> the Leprechaun in a in a DVD version of Leprechaun called Leprechaun Returns. Oh my goodness! And Dylan Postel also played the Leprechaun in Leprechaun Origins. He is Hornswoggle from wrestling. And oh, Billy Bob Thornton oh, never Billy played. Billy Bob Thornton is a Leprechaun. <laughs> <laughs> He's so leprechaun. I was going to say, where's Hornswoggle? <laughs> He's there. He's represented. Okay. And now, our last question. I'm keeping my eyes on the cameras to see who raises their hand first. Here it comes. Oh, Andres already locked it in. Jesus. Come on. Locked it. In. in Scream 2, we learn the events of the first movie's plot inspired a horror franchise in the Scream universe. What is that film slash film franchise? A, the Billy Loomis story. B, Ghostface. C, Stalk. Or D, Stab. Andres? It was the Stab series. Ding, ding, ding. That is correct. The this stab is going to hurt, Stab. Are represented. And now. <laughs> Look who directed it, Robert Rodriguez. That's awesome. <laughs> yes, and it's starring David Schwimmer from uh, <laughs> David The Friends. Schwimmer. Oh, my God. It- it's all one story in this trivia. All one story. It all connects. And also, in the first Leprechaun film, was Jennifer Aniston from Friends. It's all connected. Yeah, and all it's one story. It's all one story. It's it's MCU on on steroids. And now, the fourth round, our Rocky round. Let's go. Time for Mr. J to shine. Mr. J, the first question is directed at you. The hardest report. question. I already know. Let's see. What is Carl Weathers' character's name in the Rocky films? A, Apollo Creed, B, Adonis Creed, C, Mike Fightson, or D, uh, Grief Not Carter. Mike Fightson. <laughs> uh, Apollo Creed. Let's go. That is correct. The I wish it was good. Mike Fightson. That would Mike be the Fightson. best thing ever. I was... <laughs> good answer. Uh, let's throw the next question at uh, d Rock. D-Rock, this question is for you. Who is Rocky's brother-in-law? A, 
Tony Scalapino, B, Joey LeBlanc, C, Ollie <laughs> Pino, or D, Tommaso Young? Damn. I'm going to have to go with C, Polly Panino. Oh, oh, oh. oh, my God. It is C, Polly oh Panino. God. And Bert oh Young Ayo, Polly. received a Best Supporting Actor nomination for his performance, but lost to George Burns in The Sunshine Boys. What is The Sunshine Boys? I didn't have enough time to learn that. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow it's more enduring than the Rocky franchise. I don't think so. The next question we'll throw at Andres. Oh, this is like, I've only seen one Rocky movie. Damn. All Which right. one? The, the one uh, where he he fought a guy because of an animation that said he could beat that guy. Uh -huh. that is. Oh. <laughs> Who plays Bianca Taylor in the Creed films? A, oh. Issa Rae, B, Jada Pinkett Smith. Oh my God. C, Tessa Thompson, or D, Janelle Monet. Oh, you wanted the wrong answer, right? Okay, I don't think it's Jada. Um, uh, fuck, man. He was in Scream 2, Jada Pinkett Smith. Yeah, she was. It's all one story. I've been saying that. Okay, so <laughs> I'm gonna go with, man, C, Tessa Thompson. <laughs> Is that your final I answer? That is, I like that name. That's a cool name. Would have been my guess. Whoa. The force is strong with you. Oh. Thompson. The name saved me. Good name. All right. Wow. An unlikely, an unlikely win there. Was, Tessa was, sounds like Tesseract. Like it's a Tesseract. Because like, I was, a, a I totally guy. knew it. So I was ready to jump in. I was ready. I was like, Holy well, crap. This Holy question crap. is for you now, Danny. Oh, geez. Well. <laughs> In Rocky V, which character is inspired by real-life boxing personality Don King? A, George Washington Duke, B, Ron Prince, C, Miles Washington Duke, or D, James Madison Duke? I, I, you know, no I want to pick the obvious thing, but I feel like it's a trick. But I'm going to pick the obvious thing because I really can't decide between the other three choices. So I'm going to go with Ron Prince B. I would pick that one too because of uh, his inflection. When <laughs> uh, <he said> yeah. <laughs> it just Ron seems Prince like is incorrect. Mr. Oh, J, oh no. see, there you go. Mr. J has had his hand raised, ready to steal. Mr. J, what's the correct answer? Mr. George Washington Duke. Let's go. <gasps> that was Open my in second America. guess. Uh. That is correct. Yeah. Mr. J gets another point on the board. Oh. The first person to to steal a question that has been wrong. Whoa, Mr. J. And now the toss-up question. Toss-up question. I'm keeping a hands, my eyes open to see whose hands are raised. Who was the writer and director of 1976? <sighs> it's Rocky. Uh, Mr. J by a mile. John G. Avildsen directed it, and so I alone wrote it. That is correct. I tried to trip hey. you up, but it's impossible. impossible. It's impossible. And he did the Karate Kid. Let's go. This guy Whoa. knows Karate. This guy knows Karate Kid. Whoa! Another point. Chop, chop. <laughs> karate Kid. Also, I don't know if you knew this, but Lloyd Kaufman was the location manager and secured the steps. Lloyd Kaufman owns Troma Films. Oh. oh. Two um, points, Lloyd Kaufman reference. Project. Lloyd Kaufman, every time you bring trauma into it, you know, things and are getting And now wild. it's time for mystery questions. Uh -oh. Ooh. Ooh. We will now, release, we will now reveal our mystery. Whoa. Oh. Who has our written the mystery guest. questions. Mysterious guest, please reveal yourself. It's, it's Steven. <laughs> <laughs> Mystery guests, we're ready for you. Please reveal yourself. Whoa. Empty chair? It's an empty chair that can only be filled by one person. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's I, Kermit the Frog. <laughs> Yo, we got Kermit on here, man. Yo, not nice. Kermit Trivia Master. Even I wasn't expecting Kermit. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, that aside. Let me Hold on, all the stuff. Two hundredth episode, man. 
Whoa. Is are you? Oh no, it's Blockbuster Guy Frank, of course. <laughs> what a twist. 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 I right. really got you there with the frog. What a twist. You did. I was really excited. I was like, oh, Kermit's here. Oh, yeah. Okay. Goodbye, Kermit. I am going to do a, a points tally now to let everyone know what the situation is on points. Who, who's in the lead? Gotta be Andres. No. They like my amazing background. I didn't embarrass myself oh, with man, the board. That's all I care about. Is that the Windows background? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you should have the Blockbuster background. No, it's all about that XP. Okay. It's the place to be. That's all cool and all, but what's Blockbuster? Oh, man. <laughs> it was like a place where you would gather currently for trivia. Andres know? is in the lead with 18 what? points. Oh, oh, man. Mr. J no with 15 points behind him. Oh, so far behind. Start yelling out trivia, people. <laughs> Never have a problem. Oh my god, my filter is actually blocking out my block was. E Rock has 10 points. <gasps> How am I now behind everyone? This and Danny has nine points. Yo, they came in with a lot of facts about their categories. That's true. And your category was one of the earlier categories. You didn't throw in many as many facts. I see. Afterwards. I see how it is. I get it. Okay. But we're still awarding points mm -hmm. on this mystery question round. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Blockbuster guy Frank. What mm. is the first question for everybody? So just to give a heads up, my trivia is going to be video games. Oh, Ooh. my God. But no ordinary oh. video games. Don't worry. They're Sega related. Oh. In the 90s, so it's a fair better. chance for everyone. Oh. Just <laughs> yell out Sonic, Danny. <laughs> Those are the, actually the only two Sega games I owned was Sonic and Jurassic Park. So when oh, I owned my okay. Sega Genesis. Now, I will say this. There are five curveball answers. I mean, no, five curveball questions that are not Sega related, but other video games in general. So there is chances. Wow, We're gonna solve for the easy one right now. Name all Sega consoles. Oh, that's an easy one? Jesus. That's an easy, an easy question? <laughs> yeah. Raise your hand. Too long. Okay. I you, saw that hand. I don't know. No, you right. it up for you guys. I'll give it a try. Uh, does it have to be just the consoles or the handhelds too? The, the handhelds are bonus points. Just the had... consoles. Okay. The did they first have it up one, first? I, I thought Derek first. had it up first. Did oh, he? I don't know. I did. I All right, let did. Derek okay, go, go first ahead. then. Um, <laughs> okay, let's 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 give this a shot. Uh, okay. Um, Genesis. Yes. Does 32x count? That is an add-on, but no. But no. you get you get getting points for all these smart a, things you're saying. That is something to keep in mind. Yes. So Sega CD also an add-on. Yes. <laughs> Here. That knowledge could help you on a future question. Uh. So okay. Game Gear. Um. Can we yeah, share points if I help them out? Dreamcast. Everyone's getting playing. points. This is a, this is a massive point round. The Sega 64. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, you could just throw... You, you did name like two of them, though, with the Genesis and the Dreamcast and the bonus for the the Game Gear, which was their handheld. Let's okay. see what you got, Mr. J. You think you can figure out the rest of the puzzle? Yeah. Um, I don't think you said Sega Saturn. Yes. Uh, and what about the Sega Master System? That was the yes, first... That those are the systems. The Sega and then Genesis. The one Sega Genesis, Dreamcast. Master Sister, Dreamcast, Saturn. You got it. Okay. Very nice. Next question. All right. We're going to do a hard one. Which Sonic game <laughs> that the music was done by Michael Jackson? Isn't that a rumor? It was. The thing is, he worked on it. <laughs> he wasn't really satisfied with it, so he took his name off the project. Oh, jeez. Wasn't it um, Sonic 3? Yes. Oh, Whoa. Man. Bonus right. points if you can figure out the other game that had it. That had Michael Jackson in it? Yes. Walker, give it to me. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. Sonic and Knuckles, which Sonic is technically the other half of Sonic 3. Oh, yeah. man. 
Do, would you guys like to answer a curveball question? Yeah, let's go. I'm All right. Dying. So choose between one to five. One. All right. Oh, here, here's one you wouldn't expect. What was the name of the lawyer that defended Nintendo from Universal Studios in court? Bro, come uh, on. Bro. Who knows? I said it's a curveball for a reason. This isn't Harvard Law. We don't need to Dude, know. Need Cochran. So it had to be my boy. That Cochran. is correct. This is not Harvard Law. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bonus point. It's uh, it say it was John, though. Glor- Glory All Red. Anyone else want to try? Frank, what's the answer? It is <clears throat> John Joseph Kirby Jr., oh. which then inspired Kirby to be created. John oh, wow. Jacob Jr. Oh, give this man 15 <laughs> points for that one. <laughs> Watch high score, too, and I don't fucking remember that shit. All right, so here is another easy one. <laughs> All the Sega Genesis he's add-ons. He's Wait, I already named them. Well, I already named them. Can yeah. you remember what they were? Yeah. <laughs> yes, I do. Give them all the points. That's all I have to say. Yes, I do remember. <laughs> so the 32X and what? <laughs> there you go. You got it. Damn. All right. Now here is a... D-Rock killing Not a hard one, but one that's obscure. What is a canceled Sega console? A canceled Sega console? It was right before the Sega Saturn was made. The Sega Virtual Boy. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the Sega Nintendo Genesis. The Sega, the Sega Nintendos. <laughs> was it supposed to be like something 3D or something? It was named after a planet, just like the Saturn. Uranus. <laughs> Neptune. Sega Jupiter? Yes, it's Sega Neptune. Sega oh! Neptune. You got it! Oh, wait. <laughs> points, points. No way. Points for me! Now we get to the fun part. We're going into the Sonic stuff more. Oh, man. Wow. What was the wow. first Sonic multi-platform game? Oof. Oh. After the years of 2000, Sega's dead. Okay, no one knows this. What's the answer? Sonic Sonic Heroes. Heroes. <laughs> All right, so I'll skip that hard one. Here, here is a, a unfair question. On the canceled video game panel at Florida Supercon, what Sonic game did I cover? Oh my goodness. It's a throwback. That's fair game. That's fair game. Six. Uh, Sonic, Sonic 69. Two? Uh, say again. Sonic 2? No. It's, it's for canceled games. I can barely oh, remember games. what I ate for lunch yesterday. You want me to remember that. So. <laughs> okay. It was Sonic Extreme. Sonic Whoa. Extreme. Now, this, Get to this the Sonic is... fan fiction. <laughs> So Get to the Sonic here. movie. I just watched that. I might be able to answer a question. Oh, I'll get to that one possibly in a sec. Oh, so the, possibly. Me, this could be an easy one or a hard one based on your knowledge of Sega. Name me <laughs> so five nice. Sega IPs that are not Sonic. Five Sega games that Sega owned. Okay, okay. Yakuza 1, Yakuza 2, Yakuza 3, Yakuza 4, Yakuza 5. <laughs> Give it to me. <laughs> Oh, no, man. That has to be different IPs. Is that correct? Yeah, different, different. Oh, different IPs? I had a friend actually oh. use that same que- answer when I was testing out these questions. <laughs> yeah. I'm dead serious. You get a bonus. You idiot poofed it. <laughs> so can you can come up with Jay. five Sega games? Mr. J. Let me try. Um. So, Alex Kidd? Yes. Uh, Panzer Dragoon? Yes. Um, is it? I can't remember. Is it called Metal Axe or something? I think no, it's Golden Axe. But Golden Axe. Oh my god, that's three. Uh, Virtual Fighter. Yes. Oh, can he pull it off? Oh shit! One Um, more. Just take one of mine. (laughs) Um. Oh my god! What was that? What was that fighting game? He's an honest fighter. He won't take a yakuza. (laughs) <laughs> you want to take the other Yakuza one, the one that just came out. Uh, wait, hold on. Oh, Shenmue. Yes. Oh my wow. god. Wow. Wow, that's impressive. Without using Yakuza, let's go. Yeah. In fact, the people that made Shenmue, a lot of the people made Yakuza. Oh wow, nice. 
All right, so here here's one that you guys I just might like know. to point out right now that oh, Mr. J and Andres are tied in points at the moment. Oh yes. god, don't do this to me. Oh, I got That's a good tiebreaker. So tied in points. So this one is infamous. What are the two games that were on Sega systems that caused an uproar leading to the creation of the rating systems? Two infamous games. One um, on the Genesis and one on the Sega CD. Was it well? Was it like specifically Sega game, or was it a ma- multi-platform game? It was multi-platform. Oh, Danny's got her hand up. Multi-platform. I'm gonna guess. Party. This is a guess, but I I feel like I remember this like a kernel in my brain. What is it? The Mortal Kombat games. Mortal Kombat was one of them because literally on okay. the Nintendo they had blood one of in them, it, which parents were upset about that because yes. it was too graphical. At the time, Radical, <laughs> yes. But the thing is, can you figure out the second game? This one got on the news a lot. And here's a quote from the Nintendo president of America at the time: "We would never have this game on our systems." Which, ironically, on the Switch, years later, they actually have the game on the system. Is it Postal? No, no, not at all. It's a platform game. Um, it's an D- game. Do you guys have guesses? It, think of it like Five Nights at Freddy's type of controls, but 90s oh, was of those, mm, I know. I think it was a controversial game. Very it's controversial. one of those movie ones, right? It's those yes. movie ones. It had I, ninjas I in it. Oh, I don't remember All the All right, name. we need a, it's final like a sleepover. Final it's like answer? a sleepover one. Yes, it is yeah. a sleepover game. Yeah, I, 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 remember, I remember. I know the exact oh, game. Oh, wait. Hold on. Hold on. Wait, wait. Oh, my God. Wait a minute. Oh, my God. Night Trap. Oh, Yes! Oh my god! So a point it. for Danielle Nailed and a point it. for Mr. J. Let's they go. both got one of the games. Nailed it. When you said help for that's when I was like, oh my god, I know that. Yeah. Yeah, dude, they that's got just... them in hot water so bad. That game, have you seen I that game? Think about that game that is goofy as hell. It's so, it's so cool. bad. Over Mortal Kombat? Really? Yes. Because yeah, I remember everyone, more people it. being upset about Mortal Kombat at the time. Uh, oh no, it was the thing is Mortal Kombat was the most common one, but yeah. people were upset when they saw Night Trap and what it is. Because literally, you're trying to save these girls from these ninjas attacking them, which sounds so stupid. But it looked very creepy for a lot of people. Well, a lot of parents were like, "Why are my kids playing this?" Yeah, because okay. they use like real video footage. Like it wasn't. Oh. Like so yeah. it looked really real. Okay, last two questions. Right. Currently, D Rock has 18 points. Danny has 19 points. Damn. Mr. J has 21 points. And Andres has 20 points. All right. So oh we're going to go with these last two. <laughs> you got questions. one where you got, you were answering things correctly. I we're feel like, I don't know. Ball. I think this has been a much like last Charles of Trade, I remember being far farther apart. I think we picked harder things for each other. This is this is a very hard challenge. My mystery questions are extreme. So you picked the dead when you get ready for this next question. I definitely thought it was gonna be like 147. <laughs> he yeah, he's not giving out his random points anymore. You're well, right. there's still another category after this. Oh god, oh god. <laughs> Okay. All right. All right. So he, here's the He's next question. Okay. Okay. So this question. is another curveball one. <laughs> what video game company did Sony work with before making their own console? Who are they partnered Mr. with? Mr. J. Nintendo. It was yes. gonna be Nintendo PlayStation. Yeah. Originally, it was gonna be an add-on for the Super Nintendo, but Fuck. Nintendo I knew that one too. Out and partnered with Philips CD, and then Sony was like, "Forget you guys." All right, oh, last God. question. So bombed hard. Fuck, All right, man. This is a one curveball, but it is an easy one. What game was buried in the desert city of Alamogordo in New Mexico? Oh. It is an Atari game. That was very close between Mr. J and Andres. I know I, this one. I, 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 this is very, very close. I I Mr. Andres. J, I believe, had it first. Wait. Who oh. had it first? I believe it was Mr. J. All right, go, Mr. J. It was very close, though. E.T. Yes. That game sucks. E.T. <laughs> <is great. laughs> sucks hard. Oh, man. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Frank. All the little holes in the ground. Thank you for your video game trivia. We are... Oh, no, I went to the beginning. What the hell? Oh, no. Whoa. I guess reboot time. No. That's a show. Give me a point. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> so we did the mystery questions. Now for the trial part of the trial of trivia. Oh God. Trial? This is a court Wait. drop? Wait. Oh geez. This is a trial. You are the lawyer. You will plead your case. You oh will have God. one minute, 60 seconds. Why does your trivia topic have merit to society? Uh. <laughs> All right, who goes first? Go first. Mystery guess I go am first. going to start off, and we're going to start it off. Mr. J had the last round and is in the lead, so he's oh. going to start off with his case and be the first one to plead his case as to why Rocky has merit in society. You have exactly <laughs> 60 seconds. I will cut you off at the 60-second mark. You ready? Well, I mean, it teaches you good things and, uh, you know, it has love and uh, all the good stuff. <laughs> um, you have 55 and, seconds left. Rocky started out as a loan shark, so it shows that, like, anybody can change their life, right? Because, like, he goes from breaking people's thumbs to, you know, to helping people out, helping Mickey and, and turning his life around, and he helps Adrian get out of her shell. Um, you know, it helps even in creed it helps um you know creed's son he finally finds somebody who's like left. Bigger <laughs> and he's able to um you know find something that he really loves to do which is boxing and he leaves like the corporate world so there's just a lot of things that you could learn from uh all the films um and even like uh rocky balboa where his son is always like you know blaming somebody for like his life not being the way he wants it to be and, uh, you know, Rocky telling him, like, you just got to keep going and keep trying. So it just has a lot, you know, every movie has like seconds. A Thank you very much. That was a fantastic argument. You, you, I feel like you're going to be like purred happily and be like, you had 15 seconds once I began talking. And now the number <laughs> of seconds you have is five. <laughs> uh, I'm just want to inform you that you have one more second. And now, because I'm talking, you are out of seconds. <laughs> That I was that you should have made it harder and be like why, why does rocky four have to do for society that's so true you got me. Give, him, give him an extra point for that one <laughs> so now the next argument the next case i would like to hear before me is andres's case oh for horror come on easiest one to do this for yeah i'm gonna take off my mask i'm gonna look at the jury in the eye okay yeah so look a wise man once said that monsters are the patron saints of our insecurities and fears (laughs) i think horror movies are a way for us to vent our frustrations our insecurities and our fears sometimes we need to scream but we want to do it in a safe and comfortable environment where we could uh, look at the idea of death and deal with it along with other social themes and other uh, other uh, uh, problems that we face in the world. They're, they're, a good, they're a good way for us to make sense of the world in a safe environment. And I yield the rest of my time. Thank you very much. Whoa. Whoa. Baller move. So Leaving 20 seconds on the, the, the table Such due to the strength of his argument. Watch out. Let me calculate how many points that was worth. <laughs> as long as I win the case, I don't care. This arbitrary system of points. <laughs> okay. Next up will be Danny to explain oh, okay. to us why the plight of six white people living <laughs> in an apartment in New York. <laughs> You have a black marriage to society. This is okay. Hard. So I can I I've got my argument. All right, and I I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna start now. Uh, laughter, me... laughter is one of the most powerful things in human society. Laughter connects us. Laughter helps us relieve tension. Friends at its moment was one of the biggest shows in the world. It connected people from all over the world. That connection is still reflecting today. When it was put on Netflix, it was one of the number one 
shows on Netflix so much so that they paid millions of dollars to keep left. that show on their on their subscription site because of how much of an impact it's had. It connects people. It makes them laugh. It is a product of its time, but it is a symbol of its time as well and a historical document. You have 10 seconds left. You're done. I knew my time. I'm done. Very impressive. Ah. Very impressive. Who thought life was going to be this way? <laughs> D-Rock, you should just make mama jokes for your case. <laughs> <laughs> mama jokes. And last but not least, D-Rock, our, four, our, trial, our, our reigning Trials of Trivia champion, we're ready for you to plead your case. Why does How I Met Your Mother have merit to society? Uh... I'm not sure it does. Curveball. Okay, here I'm a he'll, he'll swerve. Curveball. Uh, there, there's a lot of like really problematic shit in uh, in How I Met Your Mother. There's a lot of <laughs> fat jokes and like vaguely transphobic jokes and homophobic jokes, and all kinds of stuff that I do not endorse in any way. But and and I will say problematic codependent relationship dynamics as well, um, but it is at its core I think a show about hope, ever everlasting hope, hope that goes. Yeah, I'm I'm high, so my ability to prolific <laughs> is not at its best. But oh no, it's about hope, and it's about. Uh, a group of friends that will just go to bat for each other no matter what they have to do to go to bat even if it's like the the stupidest the worst idea you can possibly imagine they uh they always say yes to each other they always go to bat for one seconds thank you very much sometimes to their own detriment and it's uh that's that's really beautiful and i i i love that so yeah i yield of my time. It also took well, 10 years to find out who the mother was. That, that should be a big impact right there in society. This is <laughs> Very it's impressive. Crazy. Very impressive. Thank you all for competing in the trials of trivia. The competition aspect is over. Oh, oh. wait, hold on, Steve. Don't I? <laughs> He's going to talk about my Sega. Trivia master. <laughs> tell, talk about my merit to society. Uh, sure, I'll give you 30 seconds. I'll take it. So we gotta remember, Sega was one of the greatest console makers of all time. We had blast processing. Genesis does what Nintendo. Sega was just truly the coolest of the cool in the '90s. May it forever rest in peace. Everyone should remember Sega for their struggles, and they should totally come back and make a new console. Amen. Forget Nintendo. You have five seconds left. No, I, I revoked those five seconds. I have nothing else to say. <laughs> wow. Very <laughs> impressive argument. Thank you Thank very you. much. Beautiful. So now comes the time to tabulate the winner of the Trials of Trivia. Your arguments were very profound and concise, which is much appreciated. I will say that the person who came in last place today after all the tabulations we had was Mr. J with 73 points. What? 73. Oh, come on. 73 Dang. points. I want to recount. You you didn't you didn't fully sell to me how Rocky He's you know, stealing it transformed America. <laughs> so this is this is truly like Rocky. Rocky loses in the first movie anyway. Don't worry. Maybe in Rocky too. Oh, oh nice. I'm like, Come on. This Next is, in the you point, mentioned the statue. <laughs> Next in the point rough. leadership, we have Andres with 80 points with his beautiful speech on how horror is, is beneficial to society. I, I really I thought that was very good. That was good, good for pitches. What? In third place, we have Danielle. Wait, with, wait. Third? One, two, three, four. Okay. Third place. Okay. Yeah. Danielle with 81 points. 
Sorry, Danielle. No, that's fine. I'm just confused. Is there more than four of us? In second place, blockbuster guy Frank. Whoa. What? What? Why? Why? Oh, wait, this is 30 time? seconds on why Sonic. He gets second place. Yes. He just said he, he basically Number just two, didn't want another Sega console. He got 87 <laughs> points for 25 seconds now, of work. That's now how it's you do the trials it. of trivia oh, game, oh, I remember. I Okay. Yeah, I get it. If, so if Mr. J just points, said, I, I just want another Rocky movie, he would have won? <laughs> <laughs> and the winner is, and still champion, D-Rock with 88 points, who was yeah. on it. Unlike all of you who tried to bullshit me and tell me that bullshit. your thing was all society needed, D-Rock said, no, my show is problematic. <laughs> It's bullshit, but it's I kind said of my open show it. was a product of its time. That's too signaling. This was rigged. <laughs> that I said it. I said it was a product of its time. That implies all of the stuff. The truth. You put up a poll now, on the website. Of my answer was who, who, who the people's champion is. Be, okay, but I'm sorry, I'm Zero. Your champion. show is worse than my show. Okay, like uh, yes. We can, I we can debate, but I'm telling you, it's worse. My, and my Frank wasn't says, great. Talk about the finale, I dare you. The <laughs> finale, exactly. Right. I'm just saying, <laughs> Seinfeld was better than Friends. Wait, can we give D Rock a chance to to respond? I can't hear you. The finale, talk about that. Explain that. No, they're both a product of their times, and How I Met Your Mother's time is a, a little bit after, so it's like by the, by that nature, like slightly less problematic, but. It's there. There's neither of them has like a moral high ground in this conversation at all. No, they didn't hear. <laughs> the truth is the truth. D Rock is the champion. All right, D Rock. So I would, hold if I would have just trashed Rocky, then I would have won. Thank you very much, Blockbuster Guy Frank, for joining us. Awesome special guest. That was really cool. That was that was amazing. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Kermit, that was a lot of fun. I've been here, man. That Kermit was like the true MVP. Yeah, man. Done in Kermit voice. There's a time. part of me that wishes you had done the entire Sega part with just Whoa. Kermit, like doing the Kermit voice. Just the part. I, mean, I, I, I could have, but no one, no one just didn't want to put that power. Oh, it would be great. Power. Oh, look, you went cyberpunk. It was great responsibility, you know. He's going cyberpunk. Let's look. Cyberpunk <laughs> froze. Something happened. This has been our 200th episode. Oh no. People's internets are beginning to Aww. freeze. Die. <laughs> no, mine froze. It'll come back. Oh, there, there you, you go. go. All right. Before the internet totally dies on us, I'd like to thank you all D Rock, Andres, Danny, Mr. J, all the people's guy Frank. Thank you for bringing us to 200 episodes. Thank Godzilla. I could not do it alone. And thanks to you all, I do not have to. Thank you, Godzilla. Thank you, oh. Kermit. Um, and that is the episode. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter, at VundaCast or at VundaBlog. Check out our dogs who didn't mess up this podcast, at Midnight Hounds on Instagram. And uh, remember, kids, if if there's any if if anyone has any problems with anything that is said on the Vundacast Twitter, that's me. Blame me. Don't blame anybody else. They're not <laughs> responsible. <laughs> yes, but but we support everything you say. Okay. So <laughs> I think so. I check the Twitter pretty regularly. I would. I'm pretty sure if you said something, I was like, "Hey!" I would yell at you. So. <laughs> so remember, kids. Something, something, something. Hope. And uh, the points are arbitrary, so so enjoy them. <laughs> Nothing means anything. Everything is meaningless. I will. I'm going to go watch some Rockies now so I can catch up Let's to the go. next one. Actually, I need to go watch <laughs> High Score again. I fucking forgot everything, apparently. And that's the best way to watch them, man. So it's great. Hey, Wonder. Hey, Wonder. Wondercast? Give yeah. it up for Wondercast, man. What an adorable name. You're listening to the Voonda Cast. What's up, everybody? This is Jason David Frank, Green Ranger. You're listening to Voonda Cast. Oh, yeah.
subscribe to the Vondacast.